up, you guys? And thank you for tuning in to an all-new episode of Point of View. It is Wednesday, ladies. We are halfway there. How are we feeling? Oh, we're feeling, <laughs> we're feeling good. God is good. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Amen. All the time. Oh, all the time. Amen. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> Please don't make me upset this, I'm done. this wonderful Wednesday, okay? okay? <laughs> anyway. The right answer was all the time. Okay. I, I, all the time. I got you God next is time. Good. Amen. I got Amen. You. Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but before we hop it into our wonderful show, we want to say happy birthday to Miss Touch My Body or yes. the lady that come around every Christmas to take our money. You no, know, see, y'all are young. That's what you know her for. I know her for Honey Butterfly. Yes, Honey Butterfly. With the yeah. iconic bathroom fight scene and all of the collaborations that she did with all the poppin' singers and artists in the 90s, girl. And my Get baby. Do your Mariah uh, research, baby. Always be my baby. Uh, that is Nick Cannon. Mm -mm. No, 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 please. Mm -mm. Nick Cannon is lucky to be called Mariah Carey's Hello. baby daddy. That is Hello. very true. He, he, you're absolutely right, because here we go on Women's Empowerment Month. Mm -hmm. Hello. Period. Anyways, but happy birthday to you, Mariah Carey. You are turning big 55 today, and baby, you look wow. good. Amazing. Okay, Amen. fountain of youth. I need to get a little sip of that. But <laughs> did you know today is also Halle Bailey's birthday? Oh, a little wow. Little Miss Mermaid. Okay. okay. Yes. Wish I could be part of this world. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. We love Happy that. Birthday. Happy, yes. birthday Happy birthday. Happy birthday to those ladies. Listen, Women's History Month is coming to an end. We are in the final week wow. of the month. Unfortunately, we need more time. Yes. Wow. So I blame yes. more time. <laughs> okay. But today in honor of Women's History Month, we would like to take the time to honor Holly Berry mm -hmm. <laughs> for everything that she's contributed to the film industry. Holly Berry, actually, I want to say Bailey so bad, right. <laughs> but Holly Berry actually started her career as a full-time model, wow. and she was in so many beauty pageants before she actually got into the film world. Mm -hmm. So ever since she stepped into the film world, though, she's been she making down. her mark. Shut it down. So we are so proud of you. You are so inspiring, and she was actually also the first African-American and woman of color to receive an Academy Award for Best Female Actress. Wow. Yes. So, Another fun fact, congrats. she actually has a building named after her in the Tyler Perry studio. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, his whole compound yeah. that he has. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, she has a building named after her. Okay. Yeah. She is a Perry. staple for sure. She oh, really yeah. is. Yeah. She, she's also the staple of beauty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's so crazy. Miss Maybelline. I remember hearing people say over the years so much, oh, if Holly barely can get, Holly Beck can get cheated on, baby, we all can get cheated on. Facts. And I'm like, okay. damn. No, no. I'm, she was I'm, my cat woman. Okay, I'm she was my cat woman. Oh my goodness. Her and her, her, her 50 husbands. Mm. Oh. oh. No, wow. we're not going to shade her. No, no, no. Right. That's what we're not, not going to do. No, but what, we can applaud her because let me tell you something. Every time they wear her, they want to put a ring on it. Very true. Very and true. she's not afraid to walk away. Absolutely. Very That's true. it right there. That's called strong and independent. And knowing your okay. worth, for Amen. sure. Well, here on POV, we don't run away from tough conversations, okay? We tackle them head on like I tackled my ex when I found out he cheated on me. Oh, Period. Yes. Anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. Menopause is a part of life that, you know, is inevitable for all women. Mm -hmm. And Miss Halle Berry, speaking mm -hmm. of, she opened up about how her doctor misdiagnosed her. Mm. Her doctor told her that she had the worst case of herpes mm. when it turns out she just had perimenopause. You oh know, yeah. She so, so she's pale. just, <laughs> yeah. So she's just really just going through the motions of just being a woman, and she gets this awful diagnosis, misdiagnosis. Right. When it turns out she was just going through something that's so normal for a woman. Imagine. You know? Can you imagine, girl? Yeah, like I would have had to sue that doctor. I'm so sorry. Can you I would have had, had to sue that doctor. Yeah, yeah. That no distress. Hello, like that could have ruined that woman's entire life. That relationship, relationship. Yeah. Oh, baby, what's going on? Right, yeah. where you get this? Who this fuck? Who this, this fuck? <laughs> What's yeah, like, she could have accused him of infidelity and vice versa. He could have been like, um, what do you mean? I haven't slept with anyone. I'm like, fine. Like, at each other. I got like, papers to prove. I'm fine. Right. <laughs> exactly. Imagine it. She's like, oh. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no. Mm -mm. But, you know, <laughs> speaking of, so now, you know, that she, that she found out that it was perimenopause, and I'm pretty sure at this point maybe she has menopause. I'm not sure. Now it's like, it kind of like, 
she's like more so embracing it. You know, yeah. she's had her children, you mm -hmm. know, she's lived her life, she's reached the age, and she's like, I'm just gonna embrace it and turn it into something positive. Yeah. But you know, just I know we're all too young to not even too young, honestly, but we're we're not there yet if mm -hmm. you know everything goes perfectly. But do we ever even have that conversation with our parents or even mm. our Doctors, what do you or... mean? What are we sending our parents now? And be like, it's payback. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. Or do they have the conversation with us? Like, what do we really know about yeah, right. menopause or the process that is menopause? You know, and I, I know that in our household, we didn't really talk about it. I think maybe one year I may have asked maybe an aunt, a grandma, my mom. Hey, can I have a pad? Mm -hmm. And then that's when it comes out a pad. Girl, I haven't had a cycle in five years, and I'm like, well, dang, nobody said nothing to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's kind of that's tell you, girl. Yeah, I start last month. Yeah, <laughs> but, but we have to tell them when we're going through our cycle, yeah, and you know, and right. I'm in. A, I come from a family where those kind of conversations are pretty open for the most part. You mm -hmm. think, you know, but I can only imagine what other secrets they're keeping from me. Lol, that's girl, so bad. But those, what are you gonna say? You gonna be like, yeah, girl, my cycle ain't come on for about three months now. I, I'm in in the menopause. Oh my goodness. And then on top of that, <laughs> I'm in the menopause. But street. then on top of that, you could have been like, well, Grandma, you were tripping out last month. I thought you was on your side. So what's really going on? She's like, going through menopause. Say? She having a mood swing from menopause. You the mood swings, Grandma. Yeah. It's the same oh. symptoms from your period. Yo, yeah. I can tell. Or are they supposed to sit down and be like, baby? <laughs> Uh, mama, grandma, and pop, pop, we gonna be out here tripping out a little bit. Uh -huh. We gonna be hot. We gonna be uh -huh. hot. We gonna be hot. <laughs> I'm gonna be sweating. My mood might swing mm -hmm. a little bit. And if you ever need a pad, don't ask me. Don't yeah. ask me, because grandma don't got them no more. No I can more. say yeah. that $8.99 at Walgreens. That is yeah. hilarious. My mom, on the other hand, she kind of, in a way, was forced into menopause. Oh, um, no. Yeah, she had to get a hysterectomy because she had so many fibroids on her uterus. Oh, my Sorry, God. mom, I'm putting a business out there like that but she had so many fibroids on her uterus it just couldn't be saved so they had to um so a hysterectomy essentially is when they remove your uterus they still um left her ovaries uh -huh. but yeah so she kind of went into premenopausal like super early and then menopause oh and then now God. she's in postmenopause but i do remember her constantly like having really bad hot flashes mm -hmm. and she was like no these aren't like normal hot flashes like it's really bad she said she experienced like vaginal dryness like oh. you know just like a lot of symptoms and that's when i learned what menopause was it, but I, I i'm realizing that even <laughs> When you go to Judy, the doctor, can you just right. imagine your coochie drying up? <laughs> oh my god! And you're having painful intercourse. Can you imagine? Yeah. Actually, I don't ever want to go through menopause because I don't want to have a dry coochie. Lol. It should That's always so be a. Uh, a water park. I don't <laughs> Not a have water a dry park. Coochie. It doesn't only happen from that. I was on a birth control that, um, again, now I'm putting my business out there that gave That's me a little we bit do. of we dryness. Get for it, girl. Go yeah, ahead. it's okay. I'm gonna let you guys know. You know, this right. is an Somebody open book here. Somebody else out there. Yeah, yeah, I've been on certain birth controls that I was dry. Oh my god, it was bad. It was what for oh. I, I was, I was dry. Oh my god. <laughs> no, 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 no. 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 Bad. Bad. Any, I don't wish a dry coochie on any female out there. Boy. I don't wish that on nobody. <laughs> what about you, Tyler? Like, what? No, I've had a lot of um, experience with, you know, uh, I guess perimenopause situations, mm -hmm. not myself personally, mm -hmm. but, you know, when I was a hairstylist for years, I would get a lot of clients and sometimes they would have hot flashes and sometimes it affects even the kind of service that they can get mm. because they may be coming in for a lace, honey, but if you're going to sweat all day oh. long, we have to figure out a better alternative, you know, That's for so their weird. lifestyle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or no glue, because sometimes they can get like a closure sewn, but they want it glue so it can like melt. Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of accommodations. But women, we go through so we much. Do. We do. We are so strong. We, we are. really are. Yeah. Yeah, for mm. sure. Mm -hmm. Like, we go through so much. Well, my mama says she's looking forward to it. Yeah. She just don't want the cycle, because her cycle is so bad. Oh. Like, and I have it too, like, the, uh, well, not, not after I have my baby, but before. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she, like, literally, our cycle was so bad to, like, I can't, literally, I can't move. Mm -hmm. I have to sleep on the floor to kind of equal out my back. Mm -hmm. And it, the cycle was bad. And my mom was like, oh, menopause, please. <laughs>
<laughs> she's calling it away. <laughs> but she looks forward to She's like, honestly, anything is better than I sweat a little bit. I walk around with a fan. Mm, um, no. In comparison to See, those I've I'm heard, scared. like, some women are like, no, it's not just sweating. It's not just, it's just like an internal heat that just won't stop. This is what I've heard describing. that. Yeah. Yes. It's an internal heat that just won't stop. I don't know. But well, then maybe you need to walk around with a fan. Mm, who knows? And stop wearing all them long sleeve clothes. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, fan is not enough. Maybe, maybe it's not because it's like internal. You know, you can't really yeah. control it. And I can only imagine what um, freaking um, Halle Berry was going through yeah. because she's probably like, you know, she could have maybe taken the necessary steps to do some research on whatever she was going through, but because she was misdiagnosed, right. you imagine know, thinking you have herpes and you are like drenched in sweat. <laughs> <laughs> what? I would have been driving myself mad. Like, why am I sweating if I have herpes? Okay, I need, a, I need to understand, like, how how do you I get that? I correlate it to. Yeah. Please, who and is the, the doctor? And the doctor said the worst case. The right. worst. It is the worst case. Yeah, and I was That's look, probably why she thought she was sweating so hard all the time. Yeah, no, I was, was looking it up, too, and it was saying that. So I was trying to correlate how they misdiagnosed that. Yeah. And I'm guessing maybe if she's saying that she had some vaginal dryness, mm -hmm. but I was looking Ended up trying to think, you know, and I saw where it said that they also have, I guess, a symptom that you know you would think is herpes. Mm -hmm. That is also, you know, perimenopausal. Is herpes um, dry you up it's too? Ex extensive, like <laughs> mouth itch. Oh, yes, it's like the mouth itch is really bad. Oh my god, I would just die. So when he said the worst kind of herpes, it probably oral, was the mouth vaginal, itch. <laughs> like you know, that's probably what she was thinking. Oh my goodness. Well, like just make I sure would just you guys. Die. Oh my gosh. No, there's, <laughs> Steps you can take before that. I maybe. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine know, if you're dry me. and itching in the mouth. Oh my goodness. Oh, That's my your mouth. What well, do you put in your mouth when it's itching? Ladies you know, out there, just like... make sure you do your research to for sure, like, so you can be able to advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, don't just rely on a doctor. For sure, do your own research and, you know, get in tune with uh -uh. your body so when something's wrong, you know, you have your own discernment. No, well. you are but, not a doctor. I'm not. Do not go to But the, you guys, do we not do have to cut to Google. commercial, you guys. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Pete. OV. Welcome back. And if you're just now tuning in, you're watching POV. So let's take a trip down memory lane. Back mm. to our childhood when we were being raised with our parents and we didn't have no bills. Those times were so nice. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> you guys, we all, or maybe some of us, have had that awkward moment with our parents where they would sit us down and talk about the birds and the bees. Mm, did awkward. we? Awkward. I don't know. You know what's crazy? Some people actually did not have this conversation with their parents. And when they went out and became sexually active, 
you know, they didn't know what to expect or even had became any. Became with child? Maybe became with child. Mm. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so my experience with my parents, talking about the birds and the bees, mm. I remember my, my mom would mention little things here and there. Like, she, well, she would, she would ask questions. She'd be like, hey, are you feeling like frisky yet? Not I'm frisky. Like, what does that even mean? Like, you know, her verbiage was different, yeah. but like, you know. And um, I remember my stepdad basically, but the conversation with my stepdad was completely different. It was more so of like, you know, this is what sex is, and this is all men want, and if you do it, you die, basically. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, and then that was just the end of that. But there was no, like, education on what to do, how to prevent, like, yeah. you know, how to prevent is to just not do it, honestly. Or, yeah. like, you know, and then he was like, you're going to have babies, and then we're going to kick you out, or whatever. Like, and that was the end of the conversation for me. So that was my experience with the birds and the bees. It wasn't very healthy. Mm. Yeah, that's intense. Yeah, it was very intense. Yeah, I think my <laughs> experience went a little like two women can't live in the same house. <laughs> what? That's what my mom said. So <laughs> that was, baby, I'm doing this because I'm grown. And if this is what you want to do, you need to get your own house to do it in. Oh. And that was that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I ah. didn't have the conversation at all. What? Actually, I didn't. No, my parents didn't have the birds and the bees conversation. That's why sometimes, like, when I hear other people talking about it, I'm like, dang, like, I really wonder how, mm -hmm. like, if I were a child, you know, obviously I know what it is now, but if I were a child, like, how that conversation would have went with my parents. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like my parents, like, are just different. Like, yeah. all across the board, they're just different. So... Yeah, I never got to experience that conversation, but yeah. I, feel like, I also feel like I'm fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I feel like I feel like I learned, you know, as I went, you know, through the process mm -hmm. and learned things from school and learned things from my friends who were sexually active at the time. Uh -huh. You know, when I wasn't. So, hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, I know I had the conversation, mm -hmm. but it was to me like nobody wants to have that conversation yeah. so in my head I think I blocked it out some way because you know when your brain goes through trauma <laughs> it, it tends to forget yeah so I, I don't really remember mine was it like that awkward it was extremely awkward yeah. I, know that. I just I kind of want to just run away mm -hmm. but, I have a question because mm -hmm. we have two parents here mm -hmm. how would you guys have the conversation I know yours isn't really of age yet mm -hmm. but how would you have when mm -hmm. I would like to hear both mm -hmm. of you but w since Tally already like has like teens, mm -hmm. we're gonna start with her. Period. So, so I think. I, can I get a question? Now? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you first. You don't know where I'm going. All right, you ready? Right. <laughs> exactly. How you no, 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 no. She knows what I'm gonna ask. Yeah. Her. So how would you have that conversation? Like knowing that that's the way that your mother had the conversation with you. Mm -hmm. How would you have the conversation? I know you have like mostly boys, right? So mm -hmm. how would you have the conversation? with your children, like as a collective? Cause I know you have a girl too. Yeah, so I think that when I was younger, I thought the conversation would be so much different. And mm -hmm. I think in the process of actually having to cross the bridge now, yeah. I'm still working through it every day to kind of figure mm -hmm. out how I can be most effective. Yeah. What do you think um, it is that like holds you back? The me not being open to them having sex, period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I feel like that's a little bit of my mom. Like, you know, I feel like Two grown people can't live in this house. It, well, we, it is two grown people, but that's it. We yeah. done met the Do you scare for the your kids? People. Do you tell your kids if you have sex, you finna die? No, I don't tell them that. <laughs> I don't tell them that, but I think I scare my kids in every aspect. My mom raised us that fear and respect go together. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I have to, I scare them a little bit, and in turn, they respect me, and maybe they're a little bit scared, and eventually they'll realize that maybe I'm not gonna do everything that I threaten yeah. them to do. You know, but mm, I don't know. So I have a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old stepson. I hate saying the word step, but yeah. whatever. Um, and it's just, it's so hard. Like, my son, I'm down his neck. I'm down both their necks. They don't get a second to breathe. Yeah. Period, point blank. We, Do you think it'd be the same with your girl versus your boys? Right. Yes. Or worse. Yeah. Yes, because you know what? Mm. I also grew up under the stigma or hearing the stigma that black mothers raise their daughters and love their mm -hmm. sons. So I am really trying to be equal to in that, that discipline. That, yeah. yeah. So it's like what she can't do, y'all can't do, and vice versa, even mm -hmm. though there's a big age gap. But we do try to prepare them just in case something happens, but we don't talk about it so much that mm -hmm. they feel like we're okay with it happening. Now, here mm -hmm. you have these tools. God forbid if the car break down, but we're trying to keep the car gas exactly. up every day yeah. so that yeah. it doesn't break down. And I like that you're taking the necessary steps to make sure you don't have that um, double standard in your home. Yeah. Because, like, there have been instances where 
Well, I mean, I grew up in a house with me and my sister, you know, but yeah. I have heard um, people are more lenient on boys when it comes to the sex talk than girls. Like, yeah. they kind of lock up the girl yeah. and just, like, give the boy condoms. And I was know? raised with boys, too, and I still didn't. We didn't have that conversation at all. Yeah. And I only have brothers. Wow. Because yeah. it's a simple understanding of the girl going to be stuck going through it for yeah. nine months. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, re the, the rest of their life, they're thinking, because most parents, when your children have a child early, you're not thinking about that nine months. You're thinking about the rest of their life because mm -hmm. a lot of times these young relationships don't really work out. But with the boy, I think parents aren't as scared because the baby nine times out of ten is not coming to their house. Yeah. But now they have right. to walk around the grocery store with the shame of this pregnant daughter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. How would you have the conversation? Oh Lord. When when she gets of age. Of age, right? Yeah. Mm. Like maybe like I'm not 17, gonna lie. When you, think you she's have active? such a young child, mm -hmm. you think you're going to act like this, but I know when the time comes, my it's gonna yeah, it's going to be so different. Yeah. Mm. You know, because kids, my sweet little pumpkin, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, might not be that sweet pumpkin later. <laughs> right. So, like, I just have to, I really just have to grow with her. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I would love, like you said, um, it, the reality is black moms do raise their daughters and, and love on their sons. Mm. And I, 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 that is the main reason I only want daughters, mm. because I I don't want I want to love on my daughters and still raise them. But how would you know? What if they What if she comes to you one day when she's a teen and she's like, Mom, you know, like I've been feeling this type of way about this boy, and you know, like I want to be what my daughter's friend, yeah. protector, teacher, mom, mm -hmm. sister. I want to be everything to my daughter, yeah. so she still feels comfortable to come and talk to me yeah. like that. Yeah. Um. This, I'm just going to simply have to really see where her head is at and mm. talk to her as softly, as calmly, and try to um, control my emotions. <laughs> and then I'm doing a back. Put that West Indian that away block. and give her yeah. some constructive, you know, information. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to be like, run away. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, I'm glad you're doing that because with me, my parents just scared me, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. like, I wasn't even able to even come to them when I was, like, feeling certain feelings or mm -hmm. when I was curious or things like that. So I do know, like, when I have children, I'm like, okay, I for sure would. I mean, I know, like, you know, you guys are probably looking at me like, girl, have them and see what happens. But I for sure would. Don't. <laughs> I'm not Don't. one of those friends. <laughs> no. But I for sure would love to have an open door policy in my home. I don't want to sure. scare my children away and then, yeah. like, you know, they don't have the necessary information and they go out and, like, you know, make these mistakes that I could have helped them navigate right. by just giving them preventative, um, preventative you know, information. But yeah. they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. So remember how you had basically said you learned from your friends and things like that? Yeah. Not even going to lie. My friend, I, I am so grateful that all of my friends were low-key on um, whores because... Oh, not, <laughs> not me. All, not all, not all. Oh, no. Not me. No, no, no. In high school. In high school. In middle school and high school. Sorry, y'all. No, right. not sorry because some of y'all believed me. But <laughs> because, like, when they would, like, get STDs and stuff like oh. that, and yes, yes, and they would, like, you know, have to, like, you know, go run and get the morning after pill, like, things, I'd be like, ooh. Okay, I, that's what I'm not gonna do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like sometimes you get scared by your friends' experiences. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm, mm. well, I'm not gonna lie. Like kids in middle school and high school don't know how to clean themselves. They stink. <laughs> they still come home smelling like grass. A boys' locker room. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I'm just thinking like, oh my gosh, like yeah, they so dirty. Yeah, <laughs> I was really big on the scare tactic because I raised, like, helped raise a lot of my younger sisters and my cousins. My family's very close. Mm -hmm. And I scared the life out of them. And it was effective for the most part. Mm. Yeah, I used to tell them. Like, the I, remember, part. Most part, <laughs> I remember when the movie The Help came out. And so mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yeah. But um, we're not that young, Tyler. Okay, listen, I don't know. Y'all be acting <laughs> young sometimes. But, and in the movie, um, one of the girls, you remember when she got that thing on her lip because she ate the doodle pie? Oh my yes. god! Yeah, so, so, bum -bum. so I used to yeah the bum bum. <laughs> so I used to tell them all the time that if they kissed the boy, they would get like you know a you know the a bum -bum? Yeah, yeah the doodle bump. Oh I, used, I called the doodle bump. <laughs> and one of my sisters, her first kiss, she had to be in like ninth grade. She mm -hmm. kissed the boy, and she literally got the hugest pimple like right between her chin and her lip. And we told her like I mean I traumatized her like yeah. you know when I saw it, I'm like. Get off the movie said, get off my front porch before we all get one of those things on our lips. 
And I kept telling her that. And I think it scared all of them. Yeah. And they just knew that if you touch a boy, kiss a boy, anything, she was done with that boy after that, baby, because I don't know what he did to educate LA. some people, if you do get a pimple from, like, kissing a guy, it's most likely his mustache. Sometimes the bacteria can... Your, a pimple, not... Um, Girl, that little uh, boy didn't have no mustache. Okay. Okay. Who knows? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But He's I'm glad it egg. had that effect on them rather than opposite. Have you guys ever seen church kids? Because they're so people are so strict. Their parents mm. are so strict on them, and they go the complete opposite direction. Yeah. yeah, where their parents. Sometimes I feel like sometimes when you scare your kids enough, like or not enough, but too much, they'll run. Yeah, in they'll the run direction. in the opposite direction. Yeah. for sure. Yeah. Kids are unpredictable, baby. You don't know. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, these questions you won't, like, for me, I wouldn't know until she gets, like, you dealt with kids, you got to cross that bridge you when you get there. You need to start practicing now. Start rehearsing yeah. now yeah. of how you're oh, going to baby. talk to her and what you're going to say. Because kids, we know, because we were once kids, mm -hmm. get curious, yeah. you know, and they want to know how certain things work on themselves and oh, you being yeah. the mother yeah. of your daughter. Yeah. She's going to want to know. I like, do want to say, though, that church scaring thing, I think there's nothing wrong with that because I was, <laughs> listen, I was one of those kids that grew up in the church and I was scared. And when yeah. I found out that it didn't go exactly like that, I ran the other way and I jumped off the porch into the somersault. Uh, not and I had, listen, the porch, I <laughs> but, but the thing about it, my foundation <laughs> in church was, it helped me somersault. to be we able are to gonna come have back. We're going to have story tomorrow, you guys. Catch us back here, same time, same place. Bye. Bye. <laughs>